Hey guys, I'm Sean and I healed myself of leaky gut and insulin resistance. In this video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite fermented foods, one of the strongest probiotics in the world, and something I've been drinking every morning for around a year now. It is of course, kefir. There is a lot of research linking gut health to insulin resistance. Kefir has up to 61 strains of beneficial yeast and bacteria, which are great for cultivating a healthy gut microbiome. In this video, I will talk about the benefits of kefir, and then I will show you how to make it. Timestamps are in the description down below for you to jump around the video freely. Let's begin. Kefir is a fermented yogurt-like drink that's made from milk and kefir grains, and it's delicious. Here are the pros of kefir. Kefir is a powerhouse of nutrients and packed with so many good vitamins and minerals. Kefir has more probiotics and strains of beneficial bacteria than yogurt or any other food or drink that I've found. Kefir grains contain up to 61 strains of beneficial yeast and bacteria. It's flexible and can be fermented with fruit to add extra nutrients and taste. Kefir is actually really low in lactose, which is great for people with lactose intolerance. Most of the lactose is digested by the kefir grains during the fermentation process. Lastly, as with most fermented foods, kefir has strong antibacterial properties, which means it's a great way to maintain good gut health. I would say though, and this is coming from personal experience, if you have a stomach infection or some kind of bacterial imbalance down there, I wouldn't go chugging kefir to try to fix it you will have a battlefield in your stomach for days and maybe weeks. My best advice would be to go slow. Start small and build up over time. This stuff is strong. In terms of cons, I would say there are very few. The only thing I can think of is getting the kefir grains to begin with and maintaining your kefir long term. You have to feed your kefir grains milk daily. The upside though is that it transforms ordinary milk into a nutritional powerhouse. If you're traveling or leaving your house for an extended period of time, you can put your kefir grains in fresh milk and put that in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. If you're leaving for longer than that, you can put your kefir grains in, again, fresh milk in a small container and put that in the freezer for up to six months. You can do this too if you simply just need a break from making kefir every day. Now I'm going to show you how to make kefir. Okay, so in terms of the ingredients, you just need some milk. I prefer, you know, antibiotic free milk. High quality milk's always better, but you can still use ordinary milk as long as it's not ultra pasteurized. After that, we have a plastic strainer. Make sure to use plastic instead of metal. I've heard that metal is not really good for the kefir grains. Of course, you need kefir grains. This is what they look like. They kind of look a bit like brains. It's kind of nasty, but they're fine. You get used to it. It's not a big deal. You need an empty two liter jar, I would say. And you need a squeegee, some kind of plastic tool that you can use to help you when you're straining your kefir. Later on, you can actually add fruit to your kefir to mix it up and add extra taste and extra vitamins. It's really cool. Here I have frozen blueberries. You just mix those up in a blender and then add them to your empty jar at the bottom. We're gonna put the kefir on top and we'll mix it later. I'll show you, don't worry. And that's it. It's really as simple as that. I'm gonna show you now how to strain your kefir. First, you dump your kefir into the plastic strainer. Then you wanna take your tool and strain it. You wanna just mix it around, go back and forth and get all the liquid out of it. You wanna separate the kefir from the kefir grains. This kefir has already been fermented, so the bottom, you see that yellow bowl, is collecting all the kefir that we're going to eventually drink. After you do it for a while, then you can then put the kefir grains back in the original jar. The jar I've been using for a while now. Again, since it's fermented and it's very antibacterial, it's totally safe to reuse the same jar for a few weeks or even months before washing it. Make sure you scrape every bit of kefir off of the plastic strainer just so you can get the most bang for your buck. Then we're gonna add the kefir to the frozen blueberry mix that we just made. And now we have this delicious, beautiful blueberry kefir. It's as simple as that. And it's very clean, very minimal ingredients. Definitely give it a mix. You want everything to come together. It makes this beautiful color, right? After that, with the kefir grains, we're going to replenish the milk, give it some fresh milk, put it back into the jar. I would say fill it about two thirds of the way. This is a two liter jar, by the way. When you put the lid on, make sure it's not airtight. You want a bit of air to get into the fermenting 
kefir. However, with the double ferment with the blueberries, you want that to be airtight. So here's your final product. Then you're just gonna put that in a dark space. I have the light turned on, but usually this light is off. This part of the house is kind of dark. In terms of fermentation, you wanna ferment the fresh milk in the kefir grains for one day. Then you could just drink it immediately, or if you wanna add fruit, you mix the fruit as I just showed you, and you ferment that for an additional day. It's that simple. And this is what it looks like when it's ready to drink. It's separated a bit. You wanna shake it again right before you drink it. And I'm gonna show you now uh, how I make my morning smoothie with this. Personally, I add a bit of fermented oats with uh, half of a banana. I then add my kefir, which I just showed you how to make. I had a bit of cinnamon. I'm trying that out these days. I'm really liking it. I add some L-glutamine. That's just to help, you know, your muscles heal quicker. It's really good for your stomach. It's great to put in your post-workout smoothie, which actually I drink this often after working out. To add an extra bit of protein and healthy fat, I add a organic raw egg into the smoothie, which you can barely even taste, by the way. After that, mix it all together. It's a bit full, so I'm gonna mix this first. And then I'm gonna drink a bit just to create more space and add just a little bit of peanut butter. This is all natural, minimal ingredient peanut butter. Again, guys, with this smoothie, you can add and subtract whatever ingredients you want. It's up to you. Just the key for base is the important part. And here's the final mix right before I drink it. Mm. Good. And that's it, it's that easy. Also, since this is a very probiotic rich drink, you might have some stomach aches when you first start drinking it. If that's the case for you, either reduce the amount you drink daily or just take a break for a day or two and don't drink it. But this drink just simply might not be for some people and that's totally fine. See what works for you. Also, I need your guys' help. I'm currently developing a program about insulin resistance and I'm doing research right now. I'm trying to just talk to a few people, find out your current pain points regarding insulin resistance. So I'm looking to hop on a Zoom call for maybe 10 to 15 minutes and just ask you like eight to 10 questions, find out your specific story. If you're interested in helping me out, just uh, click the link down below. It'll be my Calendly link. You can just sign up for a session, a time slot, and we can just hop on Zoom and just talk about your current experience. I'm not selling anything at the moment. If I do, I will definitely announce that on the channel. But yeah, if you can help me out, that would be fantastic. All right then, thank you so much for watching guys. Once again, I'm Sean. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.